I want to look at Willow Creek Church mm-hmm. and see how they've been doing because they preach the gospel in a particular way. Willow Creek Community Church over in America, based in Chicago. Yes, it uh, um, is. Now, I've never been there, but um, they were very influential during the whole of my uh, adult Christian life because mm-hmm. they had a particular way of reaching people. And this is how it was put to me many years ago. The Sunday service, because everyone thinks of the Sunday service within Western culture on Sundays when you go to church. Even if, and I found this to be true as well, in Britain, largely secular society, you invite people to church and it's on a different day, they think there's something wrong with you. It's got to be on Sunday and preferably Sunday morning. They can't see it at any other time. But why that is? It's just so ingrained in culture. But the thing is that for actual real committed Christians, it doesn't matter. No, because every day is a God day. It could be another day. A normal approach in churches, you have your Sunday mornings. At other times, you do these evangelistic outreaches. They Mm -hmm. flipped it. And on Sunday mornings, the services then were outreach. Right. And the real worship, I guess you would say, and Bible study and stuff, was a midweek service. I believe many evangelical churches in America do this. You have a Sunday service and then a midweek Bible study on a popular Wednesday. Yes, that generally tends to be the pattern. Yeah, so the midweek Bible study became their real worship. And Mm -hmm. then the outreach was on a Sunday morning. And it would be a presentation. It would be, you know, include drama. It wouldn't include so much corporate singing for people who weren't used to it. Like it's the it idea. It would be a worship service. So. It is, but it's almost like a taster. It's more like an alpha course than a service, if you get the sort of idea. So that being the case, that many churches saw that their church was growing and tried to copy them. Right. And they spawned the idea of guest services, which became very popular around the world. The idea that the people coming are your guests. You treat them as such. Yes. It's as similar as coming to a performance. And it is a performance, but it's not just a performance. It's a performance in which you invite people to know the Lord. Yes. And other churches grew up with a similar sort of approach. Saddleback Church with Rick Warren in California. A bit later from Australia, Hillsong Church is very much with that approach. I must say, at the church that I attended, when I was a child also had that same approach they had a worship service and communion on a Sunday morning yeah but on a Sunday evening, that was the gospel service yeah, to yeah. which you were in, uh, it, it, it is a sim- friends. It's a similar approach. Quite often a gospel service is a more straight preaching of the gospel, yes, as in telling them. But we also included testimony. And I'm not against them, I'm just saying that's a slightly different style. Now, Willow Creek Church then, find, however, has been suffering. And this is the we'll bring you to the news. Willow Creek Church has had to lay off 30% of its staff due to a post-COVID steep drop in attendance. They don't mean post-COVID, they mean post-lockdown drop in attendance. The Chicago-based church was already struggling with a dwindling congregation due to the scandal that hit their then-pastor Bill Hybels. Bill Hybels, of course, was really the key player here. The way he managed it made it work. And so without him there, it's not going to be the same. What do you make of this? Is this going to be a problem for churches which are based on this gathered approach? So discussing strategy of growing church here. If your strategy is to bring people all together, a lot of people all together, but now people are nervous about doing that, then you're going to have difficulties. I think there could be a problem there. In fact, I think there already is a problem in this country with people not returning to church. Got out of the habit, maybe. Oh, yes, yeah. that's what I believe. Many people are creatures of habit. Yes. If they get out of the habit of doing something, yes. that habit doesn't return. I yes. can see this happening in many churches, not just evangelical churches, mm. but Anglican churches, which are middle of the road. Probably a worse case there, yes. You were going through habit, then if you lose the mm, habit, yeah. you're going to have great difficulty. And of course, the culture of our country country and probably other countries as well is that we are all becoming so diverse as personalities in yes. ourselves as y- individuals yes. Yes. that our well, way of living causes us to be separate from one is, another yes isn't it interesting that satan is deceiving many people to behave in ways which are useful to him there has been evil done through the lockdown policies of countries across the world and i will refer to specific things it was like a ban on love you weren't allowed to meet your relatives. You couldn't smile at people because you wore masks. The lockdowns, which were meant to just flatten the curve, the natural curve of the progression of disease, were kept on for a ridiculously long time when it was meant to be a matter of weeks. Stopping people from visiting their relatives, even their dying relatives. Forbidding people from hugging. Keeping people apart, even with their own homes, if they were suspected of having a cough. 
all this was an evil that was has been done on our society. I believe Satan is very happy with what he's done. I think Satan is certainly very happy with the way things have gone. Just the lack of resilience in people's minds where they could have said to themselves, I'm not going to go along with this. I leave something different. So Willow Creek Church is one example of where a way of promoting the gospel has gone. We've been thinking about this sometimes live on air about how we change things to reach people. What can we do then if these sort of meetings aren't possible? I mean, one the idea that I'm thinking of is I know this is a mass meeting, but outdoor meetings were still encouraged during lockdown. Do we need big outdoor meetings in parks and things like that? Do you need to bring those back? Because they were popular at one point could be a way of doing it but of course people are very much seekers of comfort too. oh that's true uh, yes and they yes. like to sit down on chairs <laughs> they don't want the rain on there that's on right and on the yes. hymn books yeah. well you notice the proliferation of marquees outside pubs and so yeah. on yes is it simply then that this gathered approach the guest service approach has had its day and we've got to go back to the old approach which is go out and convert people then bring them to church Maybe so, yes. There is a balance, isn't there, between come to church and meet with God and come to church and meet the community. And Willow Creek and a lot of churches majored and still major on the come to church and meet people and make friends. That's fine. I think that's great. It's a real encouragement to people. But that actually suffered very, very badly during COVID yes, uh, and yeah, it's yeah, difficult yeah, to get started again. Uh, I think that's a good point. To church yeah. and meet with God, individuals meeting with God as an experience did not change at all during COVID. No, that's a good point, yeah. So perhaps it's a question of, of balance. They need a little bit of the experience of God. I think that's probably right. The particular Willow Creek model, as I understand it, was it's like a presentation. So it's not necessarily community. It's a similar idea. It's come and have a good time. <laughs> We're going to be entertained and learn something new. Whereas what we're saying is experience worship. And this key thing, Beryl, a way, this way of evangelism has been one that was used from the earliest days. If you go back to the time of Jesus, what did he do? And he instructed us how to do outreach. This is what he would do. He would say, go into the towns and the villages. And he sent out Mm -hmm. his disciples to do this. And you go out and you say, effectively, there is only one God. God is real. You know it through Jesus. And you're healed of this. You've got a demon. Get out. People saw that God was real. And then they fell down on their knees and worshipped God. That was his approach. Now, of course, people rejected them. People would beat them the apostle paul who was doing exactly this as instructed by jesus going around and doing exactly this so he would go to a place he'd go to the public place started with the synagogue he was jewish he would go first to the jews then he would speak out in public places and then uh, he would command any evil spirits to go diseases to be healed he spoke publicly after that there was healings and uh, then people would start to worship And maybe if you want to invite people to your church, it's no good inviting them to a nice entertaining time with a potluck supper. What you want to do is say, God is real, your infirmities will be healed, your life will be changed. Not because we offer you some sort of, uh, I don't know, self-help advice, but the true and living God is right here. It's the only source of true and lasting health. That sort of idea. Yes, I have seen, even in this area, that approaches like that seem to attract a lot of people. Yes, I agree. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because taking the history of evangelism in Britain, in inner cities where there are needy people, I'm not talking about the posh, rather laconic, bookish churches out in the (laughs) suburbs, where a lot of charismatic Christianity resides. Mm -hmm. It's just a better form of Christianity for people a bit more experiential. And of course, great because people probably healed of diseases and their mental health is sorted out to a certain extent through the different approach to church but when you talk about the needy people in inner city areas in needy areas where my churches are the churches that have traditionally done well there are pentecostal churches Mm -hmm. and high church churches anglo-catholic where you really experience god and you expect him to heal 
expect him to a turn bookip, up. A yes. bookish Christianity where you say, well, yes, we don't need that because we have the Bible. Uh, here you are, go and read it for yourself. I mean, I'm, I'm parodying, obviously, they're not that bad, and they do, such churches, of course, offer prayer. But it's not an in-your-face, here is God, he's turned up, and you can feel him, can't you, sort of approach. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think that last example mm. that you've given yes. uh, is very British. That is seemingly the way the British work. It's sad to me that charismatic Christianity in Britain seems to have taken root in the non-Catholic church. The Roman Catholic Church, again, great that they are mm-hmm. the, the charismatic movement there does seem to uh, be in the poor areas as well. But within the Church of England and other de- Protestant denominations, it seems to be in the, the well-to-do suburbs that you find charismatic Christianity. Mm. Certainly the big charismatic churches are there, and not in inner city areas where God's miracles are just as needed. Oh, of course they are. And maybe a better form of outreach, as, uh, really, just basing on Norman's point about uh, the approach of Willow Creek. Well, perhaps it's not going to be working going forward. Mm. I dare say we shall find out as time goes on. Yes.